Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, I'm joined by a very special guest, Omaha sophomore goaltender and Vegas Golden Knights prospect, Isaiah Seville. Welcome to the podcast, Isaiah, and how's everything going? Good, good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, it's going well here. It's a really sunny day today. It's uh, about 70 degrees-ish, so uh, looking forward to enjoy a little bit of sun. That's awesome. and That's good to hear. And obviously the season ended about a month ago. What have you been up to since the season last ended? Uh, yeah, I took a couple of weeks off, kind of just mentally and physically, kind of get back to myself, you know, and kind of relax. And then uh, we just started working out again here about uh, two or three weeks ago. So uh, it's been good getting back into it and uh, kind of looking forward to starting more summer training and getting things rolling, getting prepared for next season. Yeah, what are your off-season plans so far? And what do you hope to work on uh, when preparing for next year? Yeah, uh, the plans are just to stay here and uh, work with our with our staff here. Uh, I love it here. So, and they give us all the resources we need to get better. So just kind of working out here, skating here, and um, kind of focusing more on getting stronger, getting a little bit quicker, and uh, developing uh, just myself as a, as a goalie even more. Now, I want to start off this podcast all the way to the beginning about your, the beginning of your hockey career. So you're from Alaska. How did you start playing hockey and what made you fall in love with the sport? And talk about what it's like to grow up in Alaska. Yeah, uh, it's, it's growing up in Alaska is great. Uh, it's pretty, it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely different than living down here uh, in the States. But uh, yeah, I started skating when I was probably like five, five or six ish, and started playing hockey pretty much right after that. I mean, it's a pretty hockey is a pretty big sport up there, uh, and so I just continued to play it. I hated skating at first, um, and I didn't, I didn't enjoy it too much. But uh, as I got older and kind of developed more, I, I kind of gained that love for the game. And uh, what made you want to be a goalie? And because uh, that seems like a tough position. I've never really played it before, but I can't, I don't understand how guys can put on the pads and then just get pucks hit on them constantly. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it's definitely a unique position. I, I, I kind of liked, uh, when I was younger, I liked all the attention. So <laughs> it was it was fun being kind of, kind of the center of attention and I thought the gear was cool and all that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I fell in love with it. Kind of just putting on the pads all the time and, and kind of be in that unique position in the sport. Who was your favorite player growing up? Uh, my my favorite player was, uh, he's a goalie, you probably don't know who he is, it's Chris Beckford Sue. played for the Alaska Aces in the ECHL, which uh, uh, was the only professional sport uh, up in Alaska. So we, I had season tickets, or my parents had season tickets to the games. Uh, and so he was my favorite goalie growing up uh, up in Alaska. And what's the hockey scene like in Alaska? Because I know it's growing because players like Jeremy Swayman, uh, Claire DeGeorge, and yourself have had really successful careers being from that state. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's grown grown a lot. And uh, people like Scott Gomez and uh, Ty Conklin, all of them kind of paved the way. Dubinsky, uh, Thompson, all those guys have really kind of paved the way for, for us up-and-coming guys like Sway and uh, Claire. And I'm lucky enough to have trained with Claire a lot during the summer. We train at the same spot and same with Swayman. Uh, and so it's it's great knowing those guys and being so close with them. And uh, kind of those older guys definitely paved the way for, for us to kind of develop and, and see what professional hockey players look like and how they train and all that. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to have those guys uh, kind of paved that way. And um, – with with Sway doing so well in the NHL too, it's bringing even more exposure. And obviously Claire being on national teams and me being on national teams and all that stuff, uh, it's definitely helped uh, gain the more exposure of hockey in Alaska. It's pretty big up there. It's one of the main sports for sure, in my opinion. But it's it's definitely continuing to grow. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's been super fun watching Jeremy Swayman play with the Bruins. Uh, he's just been insane. I think he, the last game they lost one to nothing, and the one goal that he let in was such a rocket that, like, no goalie could stop. So it's yeah. definitely cool seeing the success that he's having in Boston. Yeah, for sure. Now, before Omaha, you played in the North American Hockey League for the Minnesota Mag Magicians. Uh, what was your experience like there? Uh, yeah, so that was, uh, that was a really unique experience for me. I uh, – Started out in Colorado playing U16s after I moved out of Anchorage. And uh, so uh, I was 16 going into the Knoll, uh, which was definitely a different experience for me, playing with a bunch of older guys and, and uh, 
it was definitely a little bit nerve wracking at first. I mean, juniors at a younger age is definitely a different experience. So, uh, but I loved it there. It definitely helped me develop as a player and helped me get to that next step of the USHL and, and uh, definitely also mature as well, living away from home uh, for my second year when I was in the Null it really helped me kind of get more comfortable with, with playing hockey and um, developing the maturity that you need. And why did you leave Alaska to go to Colorado to continue your hockey development? Yeah, so uh, I guess it's getting it's getting bigger up up in Alaska with uh, now there's three null teams up there. But um, at the time, it was kind of more of a needing more exposure kind of thing and, and needing more competition and um, lots of guys who who kind of need that go go out of state and kind of find other opportunities to play. And Colorado was a great fit for me there, and I loved living there. I loved playing there. I lived there with uh, one of my best friends and his grandpa. Uh, who was on my team as well. So uh, it was a great experience living there and kind of moving out of state. You then played for the Tri-City Storm in the USHL. How did you get the opportunity to play with that organization and just talk about playing in the USHL? Oh, uh, yeah. So I was originally drafted by Madison. Uh, my whatever the draft year for the Phase 1 draft is for the USHL. I don't remember what year that was anymore. It was a long time ago. Uh, but – was uh, drafted by them and uh, didn't really get the opportunities I was looking for there. And they, uh, Tri City was actually able to acquire me through a trade um, right before uh, or out during the uh, draft the year that I went in to Tri City. So I was fortunate enough to be uh, picked up by them or traded to them. And uh, it was it was a great time, one of the best years of my life for sure. Had an amazing team there with Pinto and Zach Jones and Ronnie Adder and all those guys there um, were amazing. I mean, we had a really, a really good team. It was a fun team to play for, especially uh, playing under our coaches and um, being able to kind of be ourselves there. And, and the coaches gave us a lot of opportunity for flexibility and being able to kind of make it our team and not them being so controlling over over how things go and letting us kind of take the wheel and go with it. So it was a great experience playing in Tri-City um, and uh, definitely helped with, with my development and uh, getting the opportunity to get drafted and, and all that stuff. So it was, it was a good year. Yeah, talk about what it was like playing with Zach Jones and what was your reaction when he won the national championship a few weeks ago? Yeah, super pumped for Jonesy. I mean, he's, he's one of my really good friends. I, I still talk to him all the time and just love to see him uh, doing so good and being so successful. I mean, no doubt he can play in the NHL. He's, he's a great skilled uh, D-man. And so I uh, was super happy for him. Uh, I know uh, his family's super, super nice. I'm glad that their family is able to see him succeed as well and just see him grow as, as a person and win that national championship and then sign within a month. It's, it's such a great thing for him, and I'm, I couldn't be happy for him. And talk about what it's like playing with Shane Pinto and now being opponents with him and facing shots from him. Deep. Yeah, Pinto. Pinto's the man. I'll tell you that. He's, he's a great guy. Him and I, uh, obviously, were both rookies when we were in the USHL. So him and I actually were bus buddies on the on the bus. So him and I sat together every road trip. And uh, he's one of my best friends. I, lo I love Pinto. He's uh, It's always great when we would play North Dakota, getting, getting to talk to him and getting to hang out with him. And uh, Got scored on a couple times by him as well, which, which is always uh, crappy, but um, he's doing amazing. I'm so happy for him getting uh, going to be player of the year in the NCHC and then obviously signing and playing games with uh, with uh, Ottawa. And so super happy for him as well. Uh, he's he's a definitely a great guy. He's, he's one of the best guys I know. So really, really happy for him. He gets the opportunity to do that. So on Twitter, he had a huge block shot in one of his games a couple of days ago. So pumped up about them. He can do everything on the ice. So it's, it's really good for him. Now, what was the main difference between the USHL versus the North American Hockey League? Uh, mainly just the skill, I would say. Um, I would say the Nulls more of a veteran, veteran league, more scrappy, more a little bit more, uh, I would say, grindy I would say um, and the USHL you definitely have those top tier players where there's a lot of guys getting drafted out of the league lots of guys are already drafted and uh, it's more of like a college kind of uh, feel of play uh, as you as most guys who play in the USHL will end up playing division one hockey but uh, or division three either one but 
uh, it's definitely kind of the pace of the play and the skill of the players is a, a little bit different. And what, how did the USHL help prepare you for college hockey with Omaha? Oh uh, yeah, so it was it was really good being able to also uh, Tri City, Kearney, Nebraska is in uh, obviously in Nebraska, so. Uh, getting the opportunity to play against the Omaha Lancers and stuff like that. Uh, our, uh, my coaches now uh, were able to come see me whenever they wanted, and it wasn't a too far drive to Lincoln either if we were playing there. So it uh, got me to get closer and more personal with the coaches, was able to come visit every once in a while uh, and go to games and stuff like that. So it was good for that. And hockey-wise, the SHL is one of the best junior leagues that, uh, in North America, if not the best. So it, it definitely helps you. Uh, gain that confidence and, and uh, be able to mature as a player and as a person to make that step up to college. Yeah, and talk about what's it like living and playing hockey in Nebraska because I don't think a lot of people know what it's like living in that state. Yeah, uh, living in Kearney was, was a little tough. Uh, not much to do there. It's a super small town, uh, but a, a great fan base there. So that was, that was a, a obviously great. Um, Omaha is definitely a city. It's a, definitely a bigger city, and it's I love living here. It's a great time here. Um, uh, there's plenty of things to do, and they have the great zoo here. And um, uh, I'm more of a city guy, so it's nice to have that city feel, but also have the ability to kind of where I live is a little bit away from the city. So it's, uh, it's nice to have that kind of a suburb feel and not have to be in the city to actually have to do things. So I like it here a lot. Now, you were drafted by the Golden Knights in 2019. What was your draft day experience like, and where did you find out you were going to Vegas? You can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, perfect. It just Can you repeat that? You kind of lagged out a little bit, or I was lagging something like that, but could you repeat that? Yeah, no problem. So you were drafted by the Vegas Golden Knights in 2019. What was your draft day experience like, and where did you find out you were going to Vegas? Uh, yeah, so I was planning on going to the draft, um, but I decided to spend it uh, that day with all my family up in Anchorage with all the traveling I did for uh, the Combine and the, and the USA Awards and um, all that stuff. I decided it would be nice to stay home for a little bit longer, and so we uh, my uncle was nice enough to host a kind of a draft party for me uh, and I had all my family and my closest friends there and we kind of just hung out and had food had a little barbecue and uh, all that and we watched the draft and uh, so I found out there sitting in a chair I got a call uh, that I was drafted by Vegas which was which was really cool and so I was able to spend that moment with my family and my closest friends which made it even more special. Yeah, and Vegas was obviously a relatively new team when they drafted you. I guess, like, what did you know about the city and the team uh, when you were drafted by them? Uh, I didn't know a ton. My parents actually went to their first ever game in their inaugural season, so that was kind of a cool connection there. And my brother lived in Vegas for a little bit uh, while I was drafted – or while while I got drafted, he was uh, also there. Uh, so it was really cool getting to go to development camp too. And um, my brother was still living in Vegas, so I got to go see him and uh, – go to dinners with him and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, I didn't know too much about them. Obviously, Fleury's there. He's a, he's a phenomenal goalie. So it was really cool to uh, kind of be in the same place that he is and stuff like that. So it's a cool experience. Yeah, and Robin Lehner's there now. Is it cool seeing some of the goalies that Vegas has and how they're developing them and getting yeah. how it's going to develop you as a pro when you get there in a few years? For sure. Yeah, you can tell that they're doing a great job with the, with the goalies they have there and um, even their AHL team, which is really cool. They have theirs in Henderson, which is right there. So uh, just seeing how, how they have two stud goalies and uh, how they've developed them even more, even in their in their uh, veteran seasons that they're able to de keep developing shows the great job that Vegas does with their goalies. Now talk about those development camps that you were a part of. What did you take away from them? And what was the coolest thing you got to do when you were down in Vegas? Uh, yeah, uh, we... I took away a lot of things from it. Um, definitely just experience for being being around there and, and putting on one of those jerseys and getting to play games there and stuff, which was really fun. And uh, just kind of getting to know people, meet all the other prospects. Uh, got to meet Ryan Reeves, which was really cool, and uh, see the uh, practice facility and that and getting a tour, a tour of uh, the rink and stuff like that. And uh, we got to walk the strip. We got to do all that. We did a cool uh, kind of uh, – I don't know what to call it. It's not like a homeless shelter, but where they give out food to homeless people, we got to do that. 
uh, which was really cool. It was really great to see the community and get to give to the community while we were there uh, and get to do things like that. What's Ryan Reeves like as a person off the ice? Because he seems like he's the most scariest player in the NHL because I've seen some of the hits he's delivered, especially on guys like Tom Wilson. Yeah, I didn't get to chat with him too much, but he seemed like a really good guy. He was able to shake his hand and say hi and stuff like that. And he seemed like a super down-to-earth, really, really nice guy. So uh, hopefully I'll get to meet him again soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And what's the process like for getting selected in the NHL draft? Like, what's the communication like between NHL teams when you're with the USHL or just in the combine in general? Yeah, uh, it was uh, definitely a hectic year. uh, you get emails from teams or you set up one-on-one interviews uh, and stuff like that and uh, talk on the phone and stuff like that. So you get different opportunities to meet different teams, different GMs and uh, different scouts. So it's really cool to see that or to do that. And then at the Combine, uh, really, really, really cool experience where you get to work out at uh, uh, at the Combine and get to do the training and stuff like that. And then also sit down with uh, teams that want to interview with you and really get to get to know them personally. What was the toughest drill you had to do at the combine? Uh, the VO2 max, the biking test with the mask on, and you're going for like 15 minutes or whatever. That was uh, definitely a really, really tough, tough uh, drill to do. Uh, happy I've done it, just to say that I've been able to do it. But, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely a very, very fatiguing uh, little testing thing. Now, what was your recruitment process like, and why did you choose to attend Omaha? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, been over this a lot yeah I, I love this question because uh I just like to uh talk about my experience here it's it's such an amazing experience here in Omaha and as as we can see through the past several years that just the development this program has had and and I wanted to be part of that development I wanted to be part of uh putting Omaha on the map for hockey and putting UNO on the map in, in the division one level as you saw uh we were top 10 in, in the country pretty much all year, maybe drop to 12-ish sometimes. But uh, just seeing that development and, and the coaching staff really caring about each individual, uh, not just caring about winning, but caring about us developing and us developing as human beings and, and being able to not just take hockey out of this experience, but take life out of this, this experience, maturing so much as a human being. And uh, it's it's truly the best place ever. And I, I've said it many times, but uh, I just thought about like, it's not about being going to the number one team in the country, but it's about going somewhere where you know you're going to love spending four years here, uh, where you know you're going to develop as a human and as a hockey player. And so that's kind of kind of was my thought process through Omaha visiting here. I just loved the atmosphere. I loved uh, the fan base we have here is just incredible. Everyone loves loves you know hockey and so it's so amazing having that fan base and, and being able to live here and be able to do the various things that you can do here along with being a college hockey player. Yeah and talk about what's it like to play under coach Mike Gabinet and how has he helped your hockey development uh, when you're t- in your time with Omaha? Yeah, uh, all of our coaching staff is, is phenom- phenomenal. Bernie and PJ and um, Coach Gabs, he, they're all, um, I mean, they all have great experience. They all are so, so intelligent with the game. And uh, going back to also as human beings, they have so many life lessons. And uh, a big thing is like focusing on the positives and focusing on taking a negative and turning it into a positive, not just – not just uh, looking for results, but looking for development and the steps that we need to take to get better and, and be able to improve um, ourselves and come together as a team. Uh, we're a big team program where if you're an individual, you're not going to fit in here. If you're, gonna, if you're an individual, you're not going to play here. Um, it's about the team. It's not about just you as a person. It's everyone has a part and everyone knows their role, and everyone plays that role, and that's why we were so successful this year. Um, uh, Gabs has been super, super, super uh, punctual with everything. Where we're doing this here, and we're doing this there, and, and he kind of allows us to take that, put our own little spin on it, and come together as a whole group. As a goalie, what was the biggest adjustment you had to make to college hockey? Was it kind of the speed of the game or making, I guess, facing a lot tougher shots since you're going against guys that are a bit older than you were? Yeah, for sure. It's it's kind of going back to the kind of the null jump from the null to the USHL. It's kind of that same jump where where you're seeing more top end, um, 
players every single night, especially playing in the NCHC, uh, where you're playing Nodak six times a year. You're playing Duluth, Denver, uh, CC, Miami, all these guys. Uh, playing against these guys every single night is, is, is a, definitely a challenge. Uh, and it definitely makes us a lot better. And so it's, it's uh, definitely a jump up. Getting shots from Shane Pinto isn't, isn't always fun. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, how many guys signed from the MCHC this year is incredible. And so that just shows how, how elite our conference is and how elite college hockey is in general. Now, in your freshman year, you were supposed to play Denver in, this, in the playoffs before the season got canceled. Uh, Where did you find out that news, and how did you use that cancellation heading into your sophomore year this year? Uh, yeah, we were in Denver already. Uh, we woke up in the morning and breakfast and had a team stretch before we were going to head over to the rink. Uh, and the day before that, we saw like the NBA cancel their season and people started or leagues started canceling their seasons. They're like, ah, we don't know if we're actually going to play or not. So, but we we're going in super positive, hoping to play. And um, unfortunately, we uh, our coach called a team meeting and let us know that. Uh, Call hockey got canceled and so uh which was devastating obviously for everyone especially seniors uh who weren't able to come back and, and really get the one last stab at, at a national championship but uh so we had to pack up our stuff and then we bust back that same day uh and then shortly after everyone went home uh and then that's kind of when the pandemic really really hit where everything got closed down for for those various months so uh using that we all use that as big motivation um, that we can't take it for granted. We can't take any day for granted. We don't know if uh, season was even going to happen this year. So uh, we just made sure that we, we were, if it did happen, when it was going to happen, that we were prepared for it. Yeah. And something else that happened this past year was the NCHC played multiple games in the pod at Omaha. Uh, what was your pod experience like? And was it easier having it in your home arena versus if it was at North Dakota or another arena? Um, I wouldn't say easier. Uh, we were all in a hotel, just like everyone else, so we didn't get to live at home. Uh, it was an incredible experience. The, the fact that we were able to pull that out, that the NCHC and, and um, the medical staff and all that stuff were, were able to pull that off was, was tremendous. And we all give great thanks to all, everyone who was part of it um, in putting that whole show together. It was incredible having the TV uh, station there to cover every single game. I think it was like 38 games that were played in three weeks, which is crazy. And we were able to pull it off and we were able to have a great pod uh, or bubble or whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, it was an incredible experience living in the hotel for three weeks. Um, it was definitely a little bit different. Uh, sometimes it was challenging, but um, it was it was a great experience. I, I'm, I, would, I would do it again for sure. I loved it. Yeah, and talk about what it's like to play at Baxter Arena. As a goalie, just it seems like one of the coolest places to play. I've never been there before, but I've seen some of the photos and watching your team's games on TV. It seems like a crazy and cool arena to be a part of. Yeah, Baxter, Baxter's home. Baxter's a great arena. It's one, I, in my opinion, it's one of the best ones in, in college hockey. It's, it's pretty much brand new. It's only a few years old. Um, but, yeah, playing there is, is incredible. There's a lot of great traditions that we have there, like throwing the, throwing the fish on the ice after our first goal and stuff like that, which is, which is always really cool. It's really surprising seeing that for the first time when my freshman year when we scored first. And uh, so, uh, yeah, Max Arena is a great place. Uh, we have great facilities. Uh, we get a lot of fans every night, which is great. Obviously, this year is a little different. Didn't get too many, too many fans because of capacity and COVID, but – uh yeah Baxter Arena is great I, I love playing there um it's fun going to different rings but when you're at home it's just it's just that different feeling where you're at home you get to play in front of your fans um you get to play in one of the best rings in college hockey yeah and how would you evaluate your team's performance in the pod this past year before heading into playing normal games outside of the pod setting oh uh, yeah I I we played really well um, we we found our identity and we stuck to it. Um, you could tell when we kind of slipped from our identity, we started losing games and stuff like that. But um, as we've seen too, if we if we stuck to our identity during the game, uh, we beat every team that we needed to beat. We beat uh, North Dakota. We beat the best team in the country. We um, we could beat anyone, and so that was really really cool to see where we went from last year, from struggling a little bit to this year where. We're a top 10 team in the nation where 
Um, really, you have to evaluate ourselves every night and see, did we stick to our game plan? Yes. Okay, we won. If we didn't, it um, sometimes went the other way. Sometimes we'd, we'd get uh, – get to still win the game but we also knew like that can't happen we can't uh veer away from our identity so uh yeah when we stuck to it we won and um that was the best part yeah and being a top 10 ranked team throughout the regular season how did you try to maintain that success and how did you deal with all the outside noise that comes with having that ranking uh yeah so obviously everyone looks at the rankings every week we like to know where we are um being a top 10 team sometimes you have a little bit of a target on your back too uh from guys not in the top 10 trying to trying to squeak in there so uh but we did really good with managing that outside noise with um making sure that we were focused the whole time making sure that we were able to uh, stick to the game plan as I said before because when we stuck to it we were a really good team um and so sticking to that maintaining our bodies and, and competing every night is how we continue to have success now, something you had to adjust to this year was the schedule changes that happened throughout the regular season as well. How did you mentally stay prepared for all the changes and postponements that happened to your schedule? And uh, what was the key for maintaining flexibility for this year? Yeah, that's one thing I loved about our team is we didn't let anything really phase us um, from the COVID standpoint where uh, we knew we were going to have challenges. Uh, we talked about it a ton before the pod uh, or the bubble, but uh, a lot of team meetings about it where we're th- uh, stuff's going to not go our way. Uh, we're going to, sometimes we'll have to wake up at 7 a.m. Uh, to get COVID testing before a pregame skate and stuff like that. So um, we knew that that stuff was going to happen. We made sure that we took those negatives and turned them into positives. We made sure that we, we kept uh, even keel and we made sure that we were, we were focused the whole time. And uh, that's, that's how we had success. And another thing that was introduced to college hockey this year was three and three overtime. Uh, uh, what was that like as a goalie uh, for there to be more space on the ice and for t- players to have more offensive opportunities to score goals? Yeah, three on three overtime. Uh, we, we had a couple of them. I don't remember exactly how many, but I remember our last, I think it was our last regular season game against North Dakota in an overtime. I ended up winning. Uh, but yeah, I, I like it. I think it's fun. Uh, sucks if you lose, but it's um, it's a cool. It's more of that pro style where you're playing three on three than a shootout, and I, I really like that. Uh, but yeah, so you almost have to play it like it's a little mini game in practice. Mm-hmm, definitely. The reason why I like the three on three so much is one, it shows off the skill sets of a lot of the best college hockey players, but it eliminates ties. And as a goalie, I'm assuming you hate ties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, ties are never the, never the best. I, I would rather win or lose a game. They're, I feel like there should be a winner and there should be a loser. <laughs> Definitely, I agree with you on that. Now, your team made it to the national tournament. Uh, what was your reaction when you found out you made it after losing in the NCHC playoffs? Uh, yeah, losing in the NCHC playoffs was uh, not fun. I was definitely a little dagger on the end of the year. Um, at least what we thought might have been the end of the year. We we had a we had a little we had a feeling that we were uh, going to get that bid in, and so we had a little. Uh, watch party at a movie theater and we put it up on the big screen and we were able to watch that and uh there's a lot of emotions we were super happy we were super excited to get to know that we were in the tournament um obviously it didn't go our way in the tournament but just the fact that we made it there really shows what um what Omaha hockey is becoming and and what steps we're taking and what was your team's mindset heading into the national tournament this year uh yeah nothing changed we we didn't change anything we made sure that um we were going to play our game. Obviously, we uh, weren't successful in, in that game, but it um, just goes back to if we don't play to our exact game plan, sometimes it doesn't work out for us. So um, definitely going going into next season, we'll know, we'll know what to do. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about that game. You unfortunately lost to Minnesota. What do you think went wrong during that game, and what do you think your team should have done, I guess, to have a better result? Because it seems like things weren't going your way uh, throughout that entire game. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just an unfortunate game for, for all of us. Um, uh, I wouldn't say any individual was super bad, but we weren't all super good. Um, we we didn't stick to the game plan, like I said before, and that's, that's kind of ultimately it's a team game. You, you can't rely on one guy to do something. You can't rely on one line to do something. So, um, and we know that. We know it's it's no one's fault, but the whole team's fault. You know what I mean? So, um could have been, could have turned out differently. It could have been a closer game for sure. 
um, but they capitalize on our, on their opportunities and um, happens. Mm -hmm. And you got pulled during that game. I guess I got to ask you, like, how did you deal with that news of not playing throughout the entire game? Because I feel like that's a tough thing to handle as well. Yeah, I mean, it's always unfortunate as a goalie um, to get pulled during a game. Obviously, you understand. And, um, uh, yeah, it was difficult, but not – it was it needed to happen. But uh, I know Gabs came over to me on the bench, was like, hey, love you, man. Uh, just wasn't wasn't tonight. And um, it's all good. You're, you're good, dude. You're, you know, I love you, so we'll just keep rolling. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all you need from a coach. I mean – to know that to know that he has a confidence in you and know know that um he has your back through everything is is really really good and so um so does the whole team so uh other than that i mean brush it off and end of the season get right back after in the summer and what are your goals and expectations for next year uh i expect it to go a lot better than than this past year um i know we started out really well but we kind of dipped off and so i'm i'm looking for us to be be a top 10 team again, um, hopefully even jump even even closer to that number one spot, but i uh, just keep developing. I know I know we got a lot more than, than what we gave at the end, and so I'm hoping that we'll be right back in that tournament and uh, show, show off more. Now I want to ask you about some of the teammates you get to play with. One of those teammates is Taylor Ward. That guy is a stud. I love watching him play. What's it, what's it like being his teammate? What's he like both on and off the ice? Yeah, Ward is my dog. I love that guy. Um, him and I are really close. I love hanging out with him. I love, uh, love kind of just playing with him too. He he's a dynamic player. He's great at both ends of the ice. Obviously, for the most part, everyone sees his offensive ability, uh, but a lot of people don't see so see what he does in the D zone too. He's not afraid to block a shot. Um, he's not afraid to do the hard things, and so that's what makes him such a great player too. Is maybe he doesn't get noticed as much during that, but uh, like a lot of our players, his defensive ability is great and. Obviously, his offensive ability is amazing as well. Now, another team I want to ask you about is Jack Randall. He was a new guy coming into the team this year. I love watching him play. I've had the chance to meet him before. Uh, what's he like as a teammate, both on and off the ice? Yeah, he's a horse. <laughs> that man is a horse. That guy can do anything you want. You want him to run through a brick wall, he will. Um, I mean, that's exactly what our identity here is at, uh, at UNO is. Uh, we want men who will do anything that – to do, they will do anything to win. And so, and that's uh, Randy. Randy's a picture perfect uh, example of, of what that uh, kind of culture is here. And yeah, I've known Randy for a few years now. We played on a, a national team together and uh, he's, he's a great dude. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And um, I know when he was considering where he was going to go after he came back from Michigan, uh, he kind of, he texted me and was like, Hey, like, how do you like it at Omaha? And I was like, you're, you're going to fit right in, man. Um, He's he's a dog. He is a dog. He's a horse. This guy will do anything, and, and I love it. And one thing that I noticed looking at some of your um, elite prospect pages is that you got to be a part of the USA World Championship team, our World Junior team. I know you didn't play a game, but what was that experience like for you? Yeah, it was a super cool experience. Uh, I would have loved to play a game, but um, just being being there was, was great, being part of the team, being a part of, part of USA hockey is always great. And so um, – uh, the opportunity was amazing getting to go overseas again and and um, put on that jersey and wear those USA clothes and get to see all, all my friends that I haven't seen in a while and play all play together. It was, it was a really cool experience. Um, seeing some of the top prospects in the um, in the upcoming draft too, like uh, Lafreniere and all that, and it was really cool. And so uh, definitely a great experience, really fun. Wouldn't take it back. Got to got to see a lot of my friends again, so that was really cool. So we're now in a segment I like to call the non-hockey segment where I ask you some non-hockey questions. My first question to you is how do you balance both academics and hockey at such a high level? Yeah, it's definitely difficult. Um, it's definitely one of the harder things about college hockey, uh, uh, just kind of having to balance that school. But we have a lot of resources here at UNO. We're able, we're, we have a study hall up and up on campus. We're, we have tutoring whenever you want it um, for whatever class you need. We have we have great academic uh, tools, and so and all of our uh, athletes here are super successful academically, not just in hockey, but all of athletics. And that has to do with our athletic department um, being able to help our academics as well. So uh, it's a hard balance, but you learn you learn to get used to it. Now, what is your favorite TV show? TV show. 
I, um, if we're going off on Netflix or not on Netflix, I love watching Impractical Jokers. Love that show. I'll watch it for hours every day while I'm doing homework. I'll have it up. Um, love that. Uh, for on Netflix, I would say I just watched Outer Banks a couple months ago, and mm -hmm. I love that. But I love Ozark. Um, yeah, no, I just saw. Uh, I just yeah. saw Outer Banks like a few months ago as well. It was a pretty good show. Yeah, I, I really like that. I binged that in like two days. Uh, but yeah, uh, I would say Ozark's probably my favorite show. Definitely, definitely. What music do you like to listen to before a game or just in general? Uh, I listen to whatever the team is playing in the locker room. I, I'm not super specific. I, I have like a little pre-game pre kind of playlist that I play in the car on the way to the game. A little bit of Drake. Um, stuff like that I, i'm i like rap music a lot i've uh grown to like country music a little bit while i've lived in uh in nebraska so i like most most types of music most uh genres who controls the ox in the locker room martin sunberg mm -hmm. controls it he's he's kind of has to because he sits right next to the ox cord but uh yeah he controls it uh for the most part some guys will hop in every once in a while on a practice day but on game day he's he's on the ox who has which arena has the best warm up mix? That's a controversy among a lot of players as well. Um, honest, I hate to say it, but North Dakota has really good. I think it's their speakers. They have crazy good speakers. That might be why. So I don't know. I don't want to say them, but I might have to. Also, they already have a ton of fans there, so it makes warm ups even better. But yeah, they have good music and it's really, really loud, which I think is. The reason why I like it so much. I don't know if this counts as a road arena, but Loveland, Loveland, Colorado in the tournament. I think your team posted a video of warmups, and the song that they were playing was really cool, and that'll definitely fire me up. I don't know what the playlist was like there, though. Overall, yeah, I mean that was a cool rink to play at as well. Uh, the AHL rink. I don't, I don't remember what songs were playing, but yeah. Now speaking of road arenas, what's your favorite road arena to play in, and which student section has the best chirps? Uh I would have to say my favorite rink to play at. I don't know, obviously going to North Dakota, um, they, their rink is crazy. It's crazy nice. So it's fun playing there. Uh, and their fans are crazy. Um, but I would have to say Western Michigan, uh, the Lawson Lunatics, those guys are nuts. They have a whole student section on one whole side of their rink, which is crazy. But yeah, they, they throw out some pretty, pretty harsh chirps um they that i think that might be my favorite rink to play at away uh but yeah the, that rink is fun to play at. it's always rowdy it's always packed um the fans go nuts it's a fun it's a fun rink to play at now who is the funniest teammate you have at omaha oh funniest teammate oh jeez. i don't i don't i don't know if i can answer that i don't think i can answer that um I can tell you Chase Primo is not funny. I'll tell you that. Uh, but no, I don't know. All of all, all of our guys have a great sense of humor, so I don't. But I don't think I can single out one person who's the funniest guy. Um, but yeah. I would now, say you, no. Yeah. Now you obviously have the best style on the team, but besides yourself, uh, who has the best style on the team? Obviously, I have the best style. Um, <laughs> That's not even up for debate on the team. I think the whole team knows, but I would go uh, Wardo. Wardo and I have pretty similar styles. He He's always usually swagged out. So I'd go Wardo has uh, – I mean, I'll have him tie me. We'll tie for the best style. We have a little bit different style, but it's pretty similar. We'll go Wardo has tied for best style with me. Nice, nice. Now, final non-hockey question. Who is the best trash talker on the team? Joey Abate. Nice, nice. And what no, is no question about it. That guy yep. will get in your head so quick. Do you ever uh, trip him back if you stop him during practice or whatever? It's hard to trip him because he comes back with something even more outrageous. And it's just – it's tough to chirp that guy. Um, but, yeah, he's a, good, he's a good chirper. I'm glad he's on our team. Mm -hmm. um, he gets under guys' skins real quick, real, real quick on other teams. So, it's good to have him on our team. Yeah, it's a good to have a guy like that because he just draws penalties constantly and then yeah. just get power play opportunities, and that's how you win games, which is yeah. an aspect of the game that I don't think people realize sometimes. Yeah, love it. Love that he's on there too.
Now, what advice would you give uh, younger players trying to pursue a Division One college hockey scholarship? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just – it's hard work. You just got to have the right mindset. Uh, you can do anything, really. You you just got to take those steps. You got to realize that it's it's a marathon. It takes a long time. It takes work. Um, it's just not going to happen overnight. So if you put the work in, um, opportunities will open up, whether that's Division One or Division Three or – club like whatever it is but college hockey is a great time uh college hockey is a great experience whatever level you're at but uh it just takes a long time uh it takes a lot of work so that's kind of the only advice i, I would have now do you have any shout outs you'd like to give to your teammates or family members or friends you might have yeah i know we shouted out a couple guys on already but if there's anyone i might have missed uh, feel free to let them know uh yeah, I'll shout out my two goalie partners. I went that Austin Roden and uh, Jacob Zab. Those those two are great guys. Um, love 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 playing with them. Uh, we all love seeing each other uh, succeed, and so it's, it's a, I love playing with them. It's just a great time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Isaiah. I really appreciate it. Take care, stay safe, and good luck for next year. And enjoy your off season, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Now, one question I want to ask you before I let you